Good evening, members. Um, I'll hand over to the Reverend Peter Edwards for praise. We are approaching the holy season of Advent, uh, which is a time for watching and waiting. Uh, it's also, I would suggest, a time when we might consider afresh our need for God's help and strength and guidance. So as we anticipate the business of this evening, I invite you to join me uh, in keeping a few moments of silence as we commit uh, this time to God. Let us pray. We pray, O oh God, for all who hold office in the life of this district and for all who in various ways serve the community, that fulfilling their duties with singleness of purpose, they may wisely and faithfully exercise the authority committed to them and promote the common good through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. All right, good evening, members. Good to see you here this evening. Um, item number two, apologies for absence. Chairman, I have apologies from Councillor Land, Councillor Ed Pemberton, Councillor Gray, Councillor Bray and Councillor Mike Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three, minutes of the last meeting, pages three to 16. Councillor, Councillor Bush. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, having read through the, the minutes and seen the agenda, because I was away when they come out, um, I just noticed um, that my name was mentioned as second in the motion from Councillor Bray on September 11th. I respectfully request that that is corrected in the minutes, as I didn't actually second that motion. I raised my hand to actually speak against it, um, and I've noticed it's on page 17, uh, agenda 17, page 13, and also in the minute pages 12 and 13. Um, I don't know really what to say about that, other than I didn't second that motion. And could it be corrected? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bush. We'll uh, see to that for you, I'm sure. Item number, oh, Councillor Gugliani. Yes, thank you, Chairman. If you'll indulge me, I just would like to share with everyone here this evening that um, the uh, petition, that, that the uh, motion that was discussed eventually uh, with the uh, Lady Grace May uh, problem with immigration, just to let everybody know that uh, she has now been granted a two and a half years extra stay in the UK and they've got a lawyer working on uh, for a permanent visa on her behalf. Just want to say thank you to everyone that uh, supported us that night. Well thank done. you. Very much. Okay, item number four, declarations of interest. Chairman. Councillor Scott, I believe that's your voice. Ch Chairman, I noticed on here there's something um, uh, moved by Councillor Scott, uh, or seconded by Councillor Scott, and moved by Councillor Turner. I don't, I don't recall what that could be. Can you tell us what you're referring to, please, Councillor Scott? On page five. Thank you. I don't know if Councillor Turner can uh, remember. I doubt, I doubt it would be seconded by... Chairman, if I may, um, I believe that what, had, what in the, the co occurred was that the, it was the, um, the suspension of standing orders um, in accordance with procedure rules 25.1, suspension of standing orders, um, the scope of motions be suspended for the duration of this meeting in order to allow the council to consider urgent motion in respect of Grace Mee's deportation. I believe you, that, that, was the, that was the suspension of standing orders you're moving, not the, the motion itself. Thank you. Okay, that's what I just want to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Porter, did you indicate to speak? Not on. 
If there's no seconder for that motion, surely the motion was invalid. Who's the seconder? For Councillor Bush. I believe there was a seconder. It was just a, a, a typo of which councillor seconded it. But we can clear that with Councillor Ford after this meeting. Councillor Miles. I'm not sure if I have to... to <coughs> excuse me, Chairman, I've lost my voice. Um, item 9, I'm not sure if I have to declare interest because of the Mill Lane um, watering on the Nays, because I am in contact with residents over that and liaising between residents and officers. So perhaps I ought to declare interest, I'm not sure. Thank you. And Councillor Stock, was there anything from yourself? Thank you very much. Okay, so then item number four, declarations of interest. We've had a, um, an item from Councillor Miles. Anybody else wish to declare an interest? Okay, thank you. Item number five, announcements by the Chairman of the Council. I'd like to invite all members and everybody here after this meeting um, through to the parlour for refreshments as our last gathering as a council before the festive season begins. Um, I'd also uh, like to invite members to join me in congratulating Councillor Daniel Land for his recent achievement of making the shortlist in the community champion category of the recent LGIU and the CCLA Councillor Achievement Awards 2018. Although Dan didn't win, I feel this is worthy of special note, and unless I'm mistaken, I believe he is the first Tendon District Councillor to reach this stage of the award, so well done to Councillor Land. Number six, our announcements by the Chief Executive. There are none. Item number seven, statements by the Leader of the Council. Councillor I Thank you, Chairman. I just have one today. Um, as all members will be aware, the North Essex authorities have received a positive response from the Planning Inspector to the letter sent to him in October, which set out the proposals to continue to progress the shared strategic section uh, section 1 of the local plan examination. In the letter, uh, the inspector commends the local authorities for constructive proposals for taking the examination forward. The inspector has also confirmed that he believes the authorities are approaching the work with an appropriately open mind and without preconceptions as to the outcome, and it is hoped that this provides comfort to those who have questioned this element of the Council's approach. The letter from the inspector requires the North Essex authorities to provide a number of clarifications in relation to the evidence base and the sustainability appraisal process, and these will be sent to the inspector as soon as possible. Once these are received, it is expected that the examination will be formally suspended by the inspector until the evidence work has been completed. To aid the consideration of this, the inspector has asked for a monthly update on progress, which will help with the planning of the timetable for the remaining elements of the local plan examination. The inspector notes that the North Essex authorities should take as much time as is needed to address the points raised in the June letter, and in light of this, we have been reconsidering the timetable to ensure that the evidence base that is being produced is the most comprehensive and thorough possible, and there is sufficient time built into the programme to allow for constructive local engagement and the transparent approach we have always prided ourselves on here at Tendring. I shall therefore be suggesting to the other authorities that when we write to the inspector at the end of this week, we propose that the consideration of revisions to the local plan is moved to mid-summer 2019 rather than earlier in the year as was previously intended. This would mean further examination sessions would hopefully take place in the late autumn with a final inspector's report before the end of 2019. As we have done throughout this process, I will continue to keep members updated on the progress of the local plan. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Item number eight, statements by members of the Cabinet. Uh, we have none. Item number nine, petition to council, old fire station, Mill Lane, Walton on the Nays. Chairman, the uh, petition and details there as per page 17, agenda item nine in the council book. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Stock. Move the recommendation to note, Chairman. Thank you. Don't need a second on that one, do we? Thank you. Item number 10, petition to council, public conveniences in the district, pages 19 to 20. 
Thank you, Chairman. Received a petition in terms of the public dis- convenience of the district, which is on page 19, ag- agenda item 10 of your in the agenda. Thank you. And again, Stop. Chairman, the recommendation is on page 19 that we uh, re- receive the petition and um, the contents of the report be noted. And seconded. Thank you very much. Item number 11, questions pursuant to Council Procedure Rule 10.1. There are none on this occasion. Item number 12, questions pursuant to Council Procedure Rule 11.2. Councillor Griffiths. Thank you, Mr Chairman. A number of St James residents have expressed concern over the number of drunks in Clacton Town Centre, who by their general poor behaviour and foul language are creating an unpleasant (coughs) environment for residents and visitors. Could the portfolio holder tell us what actions she intends to take, along with other partner agencies, to combat this problem, and how she intends to create a more pleasant environment for those visiting Clacton Town Centre? Thank you. Councillor McWilliams. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Griffiths, for your question. I do understand that the behaviour of some of those that frequent Clacton Town Centre can be distressing for some residents and visitors to the town, and that people want to see positive actions taken to limit the visibility of drinkers in the town. However, the powers that we have are around dealing with antisocial behaviour. So whilst some may not act, dress or behave in a way that meets our own standards, we need to distinguish between true antisocial behaviour and actions where other support, advice or guidance is needed to support a vulnerable person. With this in mind, there are a number of actions that we are taking through the Community Safety Partnership. There is a public spaces protection order in place for Clacton Town Centre. I would like to make it clear that this does not make the Town Centre an alcohol ban area. The order is about preventing antisocial behaviour, not about stopping people drinking. If we made the PSPO a drinking ban, that would prevent everyone drinking, including those who might want a glass of wine with their picnic on the beach, or just have one can of beer on the sunny day on Christmas Tree Island. However, the order does does allow us to act where there is begging, loitering, or wholly unreasonable behaviour. If the unreasonable behaviour is clearly caused by drinking, then our officers can ask someone to stop drinking or to hand over alcohol. We do have officers that patrol in the town centre and are accredited to issue fixed penalty notices where ASB is being committed. However, the primary role of these officers is to undertake enforcement on our off-street car parks, and I do accept that this can limit the effectiveness in tackling ASB in the town. I am pleased, therefore, to advise members that a post has recently been agreed for an antisocial behaviour patrol officer that is dedicated to the town centre. It is hoped that funding for this will be approved in the budget to allow us to have someone in post and up to speed before Easter next year. Initially, this officer would be based in Clacton, but could be used to patrol other towns in the district. The police have a PCSO who is dedicated to Clacton Town Centre and it will be beneficial for this officer and ours to work together. We do work well with the police. The jointly funded Operation Spider over the summer reduced ASB incidents by 29%. I think it is important to remember that not all ASB is down to the street drinkers and we should retain a focus on all ASB incidents that although maybe not so visible, can be much more harmful than street drinking. My officers are also investigating whether it would be feasible to provide a designated area for street drinkers. These have worked in other areas and we are looking into this. As I said, we do also have a range of actions that look to support street drinkers away from alcohol. These are by their nature longer term measures that complement the pure enforcement. 
We are working with the Restorative Justice Hub to undertake a mediation process, including partner agencies, businesses and the drinkers themselves. This approach worked particularly well in South End. We also have a street drinkers working group that has partner agencies, including Open Road. Phoenix Futures are actively engaging with the street drinkers, trying to provide some support mechanism for them. We have looked at whether CCTV can provide a solution to dealing with street drinkers. Typically, TDC uses CCTV to passively monitor our streets, and action is taken when direct, directed by the police or other enforcement agencies. We cannot watch a group of people just because they are drinking in the streets. This is not a crime. If there is antisocial behaviour, then that is a different matter. But we would still need the police to attend or report the incidents ourselves. An alternative to monitoring the drinkers themselves is to target the source of the alcohol. It is an offence for an off-licence to sell alcohol to someone who is obviously intoxicated. We have done these sort of operations in the past, but their success relies on having a resource to monitor the cameras constantly or on getting intelligence that someone obviously drunk has purchased alcohol. I have asked officers to look into the resources that would be required to use CCTV to produce evidence that would or could result in the suspension or revoking of an alcohol licence where that licence has been breached. Can I just finish my last paragraph, please, Jim? Thank you. We all want Clacton to be a welcoming and enjoyable place to live in and visit. And groups of street drinkers that are shabbily dressed, swearing and generally unkempt do not enhance that. I have set out a number of actions that we are taking with partners to address this. Where enforcement is merited, then we absolutely should be using our powers to issue fixed penalty notices. But this alone does not necessarily remove the problem. It just moves it on. So we are also taking steps to try to address the issue in the longer term. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor McWilliams. Uh, Councillor Griffiths, you had a very uh, a detailed response. Do you have a supplementary to that? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'd like to thank the portfolio holder for a full... Thank you. I'll keep my finger on it. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'd like to thank the portfolio holder for a full and, and frank answer and also say that we look forward to the arrival of a new officer. Thank you. Item number 13, report of the Leader of the Council. Councillor Stock. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chairman. Page 23 um, of your agenda, there were two uh, urgent items taken uh, since last we met. Recommendation is on page 23. I'd like to move that the contents of the report be noted. Thank you, Chairman. Second that, Mr Chairman, as they were both my decisions have been. Thank you. Item number 14, minutes of committees. Councillor Stock. Yeah, Chairman, we have quite a few. I'm happy to move them all on block um, as per the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Members, do we agree? Thank you. Item number 15, motion to council, proposed town council for Clacton on Sea. Councillor Newton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I understand, Councillor Newton, you wish to change your, your, your motion slightly. Yes, I do. Um, I need um, you to propose it and then have a seconder, please. Right. Um, I would like to formally move my motion as printed on the agenda, page 69, with the amendments St John's to be included in the list of the Council Awards for the district election in 2019. And I would also like to point out in the second paragraph, though it might be a prophetic slip, it should be on C, not in C. Thank you. And your seconder, please. Councillor Buke, thank you very much. I am referring this item to the Community Leadership um, Committee, so you'll be able to speak to it there. Item, item number... Um, members, uh, just a brief reminder 
that as the council procedure rules um, are written, it's rule 12, which states that motions will be referred unless reasons are provided for it to be considered on the night. No reasons have been provided. So strictly in accordance with the council procedure rules, the motion is automatically referred to the relevant committee at which the mover and seconder can then address the committee. Thank you for that. Item number 16, motion to council, free swimming lessons for children. Councillor Stock. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Pemberton's given his apologies tonight, um, but we did, um, at Cabinet, thank him for his motion. Um, Councillor Skills in particular um, made a speech thanking him for, for raising an issue of, of great significance. Um, we, we felt we couldn't move, uh, we couldn't accept the uh, actual um, wording of Councillor Pemberton's motion, but we applauded the spirit of it, um, and we moved a recommendation which is on the bottom of page 72, um, which I, I won't read unless you want me to, Chairman, I'll take it as, as printed, um, but it, um, I think, captures the spirit of what Councillor Pemberton was trying to achieve, and, and it's a good way forward for this Council. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Councillor Skills. I don't believe there's a seconder required on this. So, uh, all those in favour? Thank you very much. Anybody against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Item number 17, motion to council, proposed planning condition, read dust suppression at development sites. Councillor White. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I formally move the Planning Committee's recommendation to the Council as printed in bold at the foot of page 73 of the Council book. Thank you very much. Councillor Stock? Yeah, I'd like to speak to this. Um, I'd also I'd first like to... Um, I know Councillor Bray's apologies have been given. I expect most members will know um, that it, it takes quite a lot to stop Councillor Bray from turning up to a council meeting. Um, but it, his wife is very seriously ill, and I'm sure that we would all want to send our best wishes to them both at this difficult yeah. time. Um, Councillor Bray is very passionate about this uh, particular issue, and, and rightly so. He, he detailed a, a particular case in the summer, and okay, it was a dry, dusty summer, so you expect a certain amount of, of dust kicking around in the summer, even if you're nowhere near a building site, but the particular example he had was really quite an appalling one, um, and I have every sympathy for uh, the motion, and I know that he was, he was content to uh, accept the uh, changes made by the planning committee um, to his original motion. What I wanted to add to it, I was thinking of moving an amendment to this myself. Um, and in consultation with the Morning Officer, I think I've come up with a better way of achieving what I wanted to achieve. Essentially, um, I think that we as members, and, and certainly us as a local planning authority, have something of a duty to try to um, make development and building as popular and attractive with locals as possible. Now, that's a bit of a tall ask. None of us ever got a phone call or an email from a resident saying that they'd heard about a planning application and they wanted to let us know how much they support it. We get the opposite. We get people phoning up, emailing us, knocking on our door even, uh, concerned about uh, an application for 400 homes, for four homes, or even for just a little porch on the front of someone's house. And a lot of the time, what they're actually concerned about isn't so much the development that will ensue. It's actually the thought of the construction work that's going to take place, the lorries thundering through an otherwise quiet little street, uh, the, the dust, the noise, the unsociable hours, those kinds of things. And I think we could do more as a council to ameliorate against some of the negative effects on local communities, um, on local neighbourhoods, on local businesses of building and development work. And I think it would make, if we could remove that fear factor, sorry, if we could remove part of that fear factor, it could only be helpful because we have got to build lots of houses in the district, as we all know well, and they're never very popular, frankly, if you live in the area. And I think there's more that can be done. So, I'm rambling a bit. But the point I'm coming to is I was going to move an amendment to that effect, and there's a whole load of... Um, different ideas I had. Chairman, I know you had some very good ideas yourself regarding highways being reinstated, which you'd think is an obvious thing that should happen anyway, but it clearly doesn't often. Um, 
Instead, I think that the local plan committee, and I, and I checked this with the monitoring officer, because I assume the local plan committee had planning policy powers, but it doesn't really apart from in respect of the local plan itself. And I, therefore, am going to ask officers to uh, refer to the, to the next working group of the Constitution Working Party, which will be meeting very soon, a proposal to look at changing the terms of reference to the local plan committee, maybe even changing the name to something like the Planning Policy Committee, so that it could come up with a set of procedures, protocols and um, conditions to go on every planning application that gets approved, making sure that people who get planning permission are not being a detriment to the neighbourhood. Um, and that's something I think will be done best working with officers, with all members. I've got my ideas, you've got yours, Chairman. We've discussed them, but I reckon the other 58 members will all have something to contribute to that, and they could do that through that process. So I'm just making a statement here and now, as Leader of the Council and as... Uh, chairman of the Local Plan Committee that I propose doing that and hopefully having something back to the next council meeting with all the other constitution changes that should be coming through at the same time. In the meantime, though, Chairman, I support the motion. Thank you very much. Councillor Turner. Excuse me, Chairman. Would you mind if I stay seated for this? By the time I've staggered Please stay up, seated, seated Councillor Turner. Well, half the please, please stay seated. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is something I feel very strongly about. In fact, so my, over many years... So much so that I can't remember if it was Prescott or Pickles I bearded at some national conference or other years and years ago about planning conditions. And I was told, uh, much to my amazement, that any authority can make up their own. So if we don't have to adhere and we do not have to stand by what other authorities do or what our officers tell us. Then we obviously have to throw it at legal and such like, and this is why going through uh, a, a working party or another uh, committee is a, is a good idea. But, I mean, there is something already in London, I'm informed by those contractors who work up there, called the Considerate Contractor Scheme, that all contractors, when they're working inside London, have to sign up to. And that really, so I've looked into that, that really does sum up what we as people who get... Uh, uh, have our lives blighted by construction next door to us. Um, so really that's all I want to say is to back, and if there is a second needed for this, I certainly will, and uh, that we should march forth to make the better, to get a better result for all our residents, not least ourselves, if it's next door to you. Thank you very much. Councillor Porter. Um, as I mentioned last time, I thought that the law already covered uh, dust suppression the Environmental Protection Act, or whatever it was that I mentioned at the time, which I can't be bothered to look up a second time because I did say it last time. But going back to what Councillor Stock said, I do actually agree that we should be doing something because in uh, Lawford and Manningtree, they're building some houses, and there's a country road that cuts through to um, the A120, and the lorries that are coming in and out of the building site are covering the road in mud, and when you follow them, the mud is flying off them all over the road. And quite frankly, if we can't stop them doing that, then I don't know what the point of the council is, because they don't seem to care at all what they're doing. And it is appalling, absolutely appalling. But anyway, that's what I've got to say. Thank you, Councillor Porter. Councillor Heaney, please remain seated. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I wasn't at the meeting of the planning committee when this was um, resolved, this Jeff's... Uh, Councillor Bray's application was reworded. But I would like to take out um, where applicable for. So the council resolves that planning applications that are recommended for approval by this council, the <coughs> following conditions should be considered. You, if you put in where applicable, it's weasel words. It's like a get out of jail card free. You know, get out of jail free. That's what it is. From Monopoly, if anybody remembers that, they'll all say it's not applicable for them, knowing the way that developers often work. And if that was possible, I'd like to have that amended. And if we've really discussed wheel washing, in the old days, on the list of conditions, there was always um, a condition that said you must have wheel washing on, in the planning agenda, and that seems to have gone, and it, mu it really should be stated, because... This, this road through Little Bromley, which I think Councillor Porter was probably talking about, um, from Lawford to Little Bromley, is absolutely diabolical. Um, it's really thickened with mud and quite unacceptable. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Miles. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I want to thank Councillor Bray for his motion. I'm not quite sure which site he's referring to, but I also want to thank our leader for his uh, proposals for taking it forward. 
because the Matello site in Wharton caused real serious angst to residents this year. I had numerous telephone calls and emails from residents, and I know that officers of the planning department were looking at it. But for weeks on end, they weren't able to sit outside in their gardens because of the dust. And they weren't able to use their laundry lines because of the dust. And I think there's got to be something that we as a planning authority can do to eliminate and reduce the um, discomfort and the, you know, disadvantage that residents living nearby have to put up with. So thank you to both Councillor Bray and to our leader for taking this forward because it's a real serious issue that affects the quality. Several months, according to several residents, several months of their lives have been blighted this year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Miles. Councillor Scott. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I fully support what all councillors have said, in particular Councillor Turner's comments about um, contractors working together, because that's, that's really important, and, um, and I do support what Councillor Turner is saying there. As some councillors are aware, there, there's, there's a very large development happening in Oldsford with 145 houses going up with Taylor Wimpy, and this year, uh, in the summer months, the dust has been unbelievable. Um, along the station road and residents in, in, my, in my area where they, can't, they couldn't sit outside in the summer months because of the dust. Their, their washing was, was dusty and the, and the road was completely covered in dust. Um, residents did complain to Taylor Wimpy. They did try to make things easy. But I think it should be in the conditions. Any large applications that are really are close to developments like mine in Oldsford and other areas, then they should have a condition that they, any dry areas during the summer months where it's going to likely going to be dusty, then precautions of trapping the dust to the ground by spraying vehicles or even when they're cutting the tiles. When they were cutting the tiles for the developments in my patch, Chairman, um, they were using these machines and the dust from the tiles were going everywhere. So if they had made these tiles or cut them elsewhere, we wouldn't have the dust and the problem in the first place. But I fully support the councillors, what they've just said. Thank you. Councillor Broderick. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Totally agree with everything everybody has said. We're having the horrendous problems at the moment. Uh, only five bungalows being built on the old church site. And, you know, these people take a pride the neighbours take a pride in the way they, they do their gardens, they, they keep their bungalows clean and so on, outside. And, and, and if they complain to the builders, they get um, foul language used. So um, I welcome this and uh, hope, well, I know it's going to be supported, so thank you anyway. Thank you very much. I have nobody else on my list to speak, so I'll take this to the vote. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Item number 18, recommendations from Cabinet, the Local Council Tax Support Scheme 2019-2020, Council Tax Exemptions Discounts for 2019-2020 and the Annual Minimum Revenue Provision Policy Statement 2019-2020. Councillor Honeywood. Thank you, Chairman. I'm, I'm glad you said all that rather than myself. Um, in fact, uh, I'd like, like to move that as written. As you see, there are no changes uh, to previous years, and I think in the, the present uh, economic climate and situation, that's the wise thing to do. So I'll, uh, I'll move that as written, Chairman. Thank you. There's no seconder required on this. So does anybody wish to speak on this? Okay, then I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. Item number 19, recommendations from Cabinet to review of the Council's constitution. Councillor Gugliani. Yes, Chairman, thank you very much indeed. Uh, as you know, I've only just come back for it. I've been visiting my uh, grandchildren. And um, a lot has happened since I've uh, been away. Uh, I move the recommendations, uh, recommendation minus the, uh, um, obviously, the council procedure rules, and uh, I commend it to the council for approval. Thank you very much. There's no seconder required on this one. Anybody wish to speak? Councillor just, Scott. Just for clarification, um, Chairman, at the Cabinet meeting when we had uh, the full um, 
item with the procedurals. Now, I said that I wanted to look at the procedurals. The procedurals aren't coming into force until uh, after the election in May, so, so, that, so we're not time pressured on that. And we've since put them to an all-member briefing where there was a lot of feedback, a kind of really constructive feedback. Um, I've also had one or two approaches that there should be better representation on the working party. Um, I know we've tried to keep it small and, and, and effective, and it does mean widening the membership, but I want to get all group leaders on the working party um, and just make sure that, because ideally changes to the constitution get nodded through, the minute we start sort of disagreeing or trying to introduce amendments on the night, it gets, it gets a bit problematic and troublesome. So I would like us to be able to bring forward a set of changes to the procedurals, for example, on the uh, way that motions are dealt with on the night to speed that process up. Um, but but a, a system that everyone can agree, and I'm hoping that we can bring that to the next council meeting. And also, as part of that, I'm hoping that we can bring the, what I just talked about in respect of planning policy. So I'm looking for that to come to the next council meeting. I'm not sure when that is. Is that January? January, yeah. Hopefully, Chairman, January. And, and so, therefore, hopefully, the, Carlo will be reconvening the working party within the next week or two, I would have thought. Okay, Councillor Henderson. Thank you. Um, yes, I just want to say a few words. And first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the officers for all the hard work that they've um, committed to these changes in the Constitution. Um, there's a lot of work. I've said this before at the briefing that we had. It's easy for us councillors to come up with these recommendations and, and decision changes. But there's a lot of work go behind the scenes to actually um, make the changes and put things in a in a particular order and, and make them workable. Um, I'd just like to say how pleased I am about some of these changes and um, the leader just mentioned about motions. Um, I'm sure other backbenchers will share my frustration over uh, the last years of actually putting a motion to the council to only find it and it's in the procedural so I accept I didn't accept it, I was frustrated on occasions that has happened to me, but it is in the procedure rules and that's something I think we needed to change where we're now putting the power absolutely back into the hands of all backbenchers in this chamber rather than one person. We're putting the, it back in the hands of the many and not the one person to make a decision on referring a motion to a, another place where we can't discuss it. And we've seen a prime example here tonight of a motion which has now been deferred. Um, that shouldn't happen. I think this is really good news for uh, uh, backbenchers to be able to put their motions forward, air their views on behalf of their residents, and a decision to be made by full council rather than, than one individual. So I hope members will support this as a way forward because I think it's the best thing that we've done for years to make sure that true democracy and debate takes place in this chamber. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm just going to ask for some clarification before we move any further on that, because you brought up a, a subject. Chairman, there. can I just clarify Councillor Henderson's point? The, the, um, the, 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 the um, constitution for the, the, the rules for council are not part of this tonight. So the motions, etc., are not. These were the parts which were taken out. They were taken to normal member briefings cause, so that members had the chance to have a further discussion, and they were the ones which were referred to by Councillor, Councillor Stock, which will come back in the January one. So all the procedural, one, all the procedural appendices in here are here as per the report that went to Cabinet, but the Constitution, but the Constitution, the Council Constitution, were well, the ones which will come back. Sorry, just for clarification, because you said about supporting it tonight, but actually they're not, not the ones in here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Broderick. Thank you, Chair. Um, I really welcome Council Stock's um, comments about all leaders being included in this. Um, I have reservations on a, on a large section of this that I would like to have commented on um, and I expect um, other leaders would as well that were excluded so thank you very much for that and uh, I look forward to hopefully be invited to take part. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Heaney please remain seated. Thank you. I don't know whether this is the right time to bring this up or I should bring it up in January but I'm concerned about the proposal uh, in, um, to start at 7.30 because we want working people to um, sit as councillors and I, if you're coming back from even Ch well, London you certainly won't get here by 7.30 or even Chelmsford it's too late and um, 
the other, although personally seven is much better for me, of course, but other, and the other thing is the planning that you can't um, bring planning applications to council, a uh, planning committee, unless you you can't call things in, unless you're in the ward that the application is in. Now, you could be in the adjacent ward, and it affects your ward much more than the, the, um, the ward that the application's in. So I do think a councillors in adjacent wards to a planning application should be allowed to call it in. I can only remember one time in all my years on the planning committee when somebody called in a, an application that wasn't in their own ward, and I would like that to be considered, please. Otherwise, I'm in favour of the rest of it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to ask for some further clarification on the bits that you've mentioned. Sorry, Chairman. Again, can I just clarify that the, the start time is the council procedure rules, which is not being considered at this time. That is for the, for the, the January meeting. Uh, this is purely the, um, the meeting there. However, can I just say all the feedback which has been given, we will feed into the Constitution Working Party, which is going to meet as valuable additions um, and feedback from all members um, to be considered as part of the, for the outcome, which will be Return back to Council in January. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Talbot. Yes, Chairman. The Chief Executive has just covered one of the things I was going to say. To be absolutely clear what we're being asked to vote on tonight, turn to page 133. And at the bottom of that page are the headings of all the subsections. Uh, Ivan gave a good uh, explanation but speaking overall about the constitutional review, and I think what the Chief Executive has said twice now, is that what on this list, if you look, headed at the top, Appendix A1 and Appendix A2, they are not being dealt with tonight. They would not anyway come into operation until the 1st of May next year, and the leader decided that it ought to be something that all members have thoroughly considered because it is the way we manage our meetings. The way tonight would be run from May the 2nd onwards with the new council. It's most important you know that. The other ones are very important, but the other ones, as the, the other sections there, as the preface to the report says, are amendments, if you like, to some extent to tidy up some of those sections and also to incorporate latest impositions in changes in rules applied by the government. The rest of it is <coughs> considered in many respects a tidy and up or a formality. The one that's going to concern us and the one we'll have the big debate about is Appendix A1 and Appendix A2, but not tonight. Thank you, Councillor Talbot. Councillor Gugliani, did you wish to add a uh, No, not really, Chairman, but uh, it's just to say that all the comments that have been put forward this evening and also various into the run-up to uh, this evening, tonight's meeting, will be taken into consideration. It will be interesting to see what the, uh, how the um, uh, conf consultation, the further consultation will go. And uh, this proposal will come back and there will be debate and it will be voted upon in the January meeting. Thank you. Councillor Miles. Thank you, Chairman. I'm sorry about this, but um, I want to go back to Councillor Heaney's recommendation. And I just want to say I have no problems that adjacent wards, etc., are, are included in call-ins for planning. But I do think there has to be a proviso there that it in concerns and involves the the councillor for the ward, because I have seen examples of call-ins affecting my own ward that have been arranged, and I'm not aware of it, and it bothers me that I'm not involved. Only one, one example, but one is one too many as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to put that into the working party. Councillor Everett. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm confused. Um, we've talked about appendices A2 and A1. Um, I'd like guidance, please, as to whether A3 is something we are discussing tonight, because if it is, that's exactly the um, place where Councillor Heaney um, was referring to, and might well be something that, if I've read this wrong, is going to be, de going to be dealt with tonight. Bear with us a moment while we clarify that for you. 
Councillors, if you refer to page 124 of your council agenda, it was recommended to council by cabinet that the council's constitution be amended to reflect the proposed changes as set out in appendices B to N, which are included within this agenda. A1 and A2 were not included within this agenda and are not part of the consideration this evening. So item A3 was the item, so that's the item of cabinet. Um, so there are parts of that that are referred to in that report that are not here this evening, but the appendices B to N are. So if any of the queries that you have um, you wish to discuss relate to the appendices which were A1 and A2, they, sh they are not within this agenda. So if there is something that you're concerned about within this agenda, in the appendices, then it is being voted on this evening. Councillor Everett. Thank you. Um, that was uh, helpful. Thank you. Um, where I get very confused is that I can see the references in the agenda to A through to M, um, M for mother. I can't see N in it. So I'm doubly confused as to whether A3 and part I um, is or is not being voted upon tonight. Be with you in a second, Councillor. Appendix N is on page 214. Sorry, 241. Oh, you said Appendix N. Sorry, Councillor Everett, we're now disagreeing up here whether you said Appendix M or N. <laughs> Appendix M is on page 239. Appendix N for November is on page 241. Are you suitably informed, Councillor Everett? Yes, I am, thank you. <laughs> thank goodness for that. Councillor Stock. Uh, Chairman, I'm going to propose an amendment um, in an attempt to help um, and I do hope I do help. Um, on page 194, um, this was, I think, the bone of contention as articulated by Councillor Heaney, amongst others. Um, the, the proposal is um, that um, members wanting to refer a planning application to committee, as something I'm sure we've all done at some point or other, that, that otherwise would have been determined under delegated powers by officers. Members have the right to uh, demand, if you like, that the planning committee actually make the determination and there are certain rules they have to follow, and there's a, there's a sort of tightening up of those rules, if you like, or not tightening up so much for clarification. But the red text says, in accordance with the member referral scheme, and then there's the asterisk says on page 194 that the scheme is to be agreed by the chairman of the planning committee, Councillor White, at the moment, in consultation with a portfolio holder for planning, which is Fred at the moment, um, the head of planning, which is Kath, and the monitoring officer, which is Lisa. Um, I think if we added the words, and the constitution working party, to the list of consultees. I think that would get us over the hump. Because what I would suggest is that that is exactly... The member referral scheme is maybe something that might fall under the uh, remit of the new local plan committee once we change the um, terms of reference and powers of that committee. So it could be something that is drawn up by that committee. But for the, in the meantime, in the interregnum period, until we get there, I think that would help because members who've got concerns about restrictions that could be imposed upon them to call in... Um, I, I don't think anything's been agreed as far as I'm aware nothing's been agreed yet the chairman hasn't even got the power to do so yet but it would be cons consultation only and I'm sure we can all trust John to, to listen to people and to consult well so if, if members are happy with that uh, I think that might just get us over that hump Councillor Calver yeah. 
Thank you, Mr Chairman. May I just ask a, a very simple question? Is the issue that Councillor Heaney uh, has raised being voted on tonight? I hope I'm clearer than last time. Um, so I think there were two points that Councillor Heaney raised. One was the start time, and that was in the council procedure rules, which is coming in January. Yeah, the second point was the um, whether um, members in adjacent wards could call in applications to the planning committee. So that is being um, decided upon tonight in the form of page 194 of your agenda refers to the terms of reference of the planning committee. And what it includes is some red text, which I will read out for you, Councillor Calver, which says the, the new wording, to, it, it will say, within 28 days of the commencement of formal consultation, a written request is received from a district councillor. The new wording in red would be in accordance with the member referral scheme. And then it would go on to read, requesting that the application be brought before the planning committee for determination, giving material reasons for that request. Under that text, there is a little asterisk which says the scheme, i.e. the member referral scheme, um, will be agreed by the chairman of the planning committee in consultation with the plan portfolio holder for planning, head of planning and monitoring officer, together with the Constitution Working Party, if that bit was, that last bit was a, um, carried as an amendment. So the point that Councillor Heaney is referring to is the fact that at the moment, um, yeah, okay. Go ahead, Councillor Calver. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. So once that schedule of, in effect, a working practice for that referral scheme is drawn up by the people you've referred to, will that then come back to this chamber to be voted on, or debated and voted on, please? No, in effect, the scheme, approval of the scheme, will be being delegated to the chairman of the planning committee in consultation with those individuals that I referred to. So the actual scheme would be agreed by the planning committee chairman after consultation with various individuals. So it wouldn't come back to the co council to approve. It would, in effect, be a delegated power. Councillor Calver. I, I thank you for your indulgence on this, Mr Chairman. You're welcome. I, still am there. Yeah. I do have an issue with this because I, I think the point that Councillor Heaney has raised has got real merit, but it can actually go wider than even just the adjacent ward because if you're talking an issue of noise nuisance under certain circumstances, it can actually go wider than the neighbouring ward. So I think with the greatest respect to those involved, I do feel that should be the subject of debate tonight because a de the debate would, I think, might throw up further issues to be considered on that because really this is one, one chance to get this right. Yeah. Um, well, in that case, Chairman, I, and I don't disagree with what Councillor Cal was saying. Um, it, it does warrant something. I, th I think clearly all members want to have a say in this. Um, can we just pull that one section uh, without pulling the whole thing apart? So, so move everything else bar that section uh, for it to come back to the next um, council uh, meeting as part of all the other constitutional changes to be debated at the next council meeting. And, and I apologise to you, Councillor Calvert, that I didn't read out what I was talking about earlier. That's very rude of me. Um, but, yeah, no, I think Councillor Calvert makes a really good point. Um, there isn't any kind of hidden... Um, political thing going on here. I, I think this is about getting a scheme that everyone can agree to. 
Um, and I think there's, there's clearly a mood that the members want to have a say in it. So I'm more than happy that we do that. If we can just pull out, uh, and I'll be guided by you, um, Lisa, as to what we should pull out to make it um, coherent, what remains, if you like, yeah? Appendix I. Whether it's the whole of Appendix I or whether it's just some paragraphs. <laughs> okay. So it will be Appendix I on page 193 and 194 that will be removed from the um, recommendation. So it, once, it, once it's moved, it would be, so B to H, checking me out for bit, B to H and J to N for November. Councillor Honeywood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if if Councillor Everett's a little bit confused, imagine how confused I am. Um, I've read through this and I've listened to conversations, and I've, I've got a fairly sort of simple question to ask. If I, as a ward councillor, currently, if I write to a, an officer or a planning officer saying that I wished a plan and application to be referred to committee and gave reasons for that, that goes through as is. Under this system, does that mean that that decision, in theory, could be taken away from me and someone overrides it and says, no, actually, we're not referring that to committee? Not if it's not the award. Yeah. It sort of depends on what the scheme says. Um, but can I just sort of reassure members that some proposed wording for um, a scheme has been prepared. It was um, circulated to the Constitution Working Party, but what I think is the right thing to do is there is wider consultation with the proposed wording of the scheme, and we can definitely pick up any questions and concerns anybody has. So by taking it out of this evening, we've got more time to do that, just like you're doing with the council procedure rules. Uh, Councillor Everett, you were OK a few minutes ago, but you're obviously confused now. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'd like to second Councillor Stock's um, amendment, please. Thank you very much. Councillor Gugliani. Yeah. Yeah, I'll accept the amendments, uh, Chairman, but just would like to make it 100% clear that this is not to try to take the rights from members away to call the planning application in their ward. Uh, we just try to look to put a, a scheme in place that works and to eliminate the vexatious call-ins that we've received so far. That, that's really purely aimed to stop some of those uh, taking place in future. But this is not to take away the rights to members to call an application in their wards or, as Council Cover says, that could affect them because of various other uh, transportation, noise, whatever. And that's really what, why this merits a, a discussion. The Constitution Working Party is meeting again on the 6th of December, which is very soon, and we will be debating the uh, earlier um, issue that Council Stock debated as well as this one. So we will be in a position to bring back to full council on the 22nd of January the proposal of the working party, having taken into consideration all the other comments that other parties have to make. Thank you. Okay, members, um, with the removal of the aforementioned items, uh, are we happy now to vote on the motion? All those in favour? Thank you. Any against? And any abstentions? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Item number 20, report submitted to the Council by an overview and scrutiny committee. There are none on this occasion. Item number 21, report of the Chief Executive A4 non attendance at meetings. Thank you, Chairman. In accordance with the Constitution, I refer to um, item on pages 243 and 244, um, which is for your attention um, and for noting. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. 
Item number 22. Councillor Henderson. Yes, um, I take it we're allowed to speak on these reports. Um, I'd just like to raise my concern about um, Councillor MP Watland not attending uh, full council meetings since May 2017. If he was, if one of his residents within this area hadn't attended perhaps a hearing for any th reason who may be on benefits, they would be sanctioned and have their money taken away. We've got an MP here who's absolutely ignored his responsibilities to his residents uh, and to this council on not attending any meetings. And you can't tell me, because I know what's going on in, in the um, Commons at the moment, there's very little on decision making. You're not telling me he couldn't have come back and attended one of these meetings. I think it's absolutely disgraceful that he's treating this council in this way. Um, it, would be the, it would have been good for him to actually come here and he could have possibly put a question to one of the cabinet. He could have asked them what impact his government's cuts in local finances have on this district council. He could have put another question into the council asking them what impact his government's introduction of universal credit Let's just keep it about the member, not about the government, thank you. Council. Keep no, it tendering I'm, I'm focus. talking about what one of our members could have done here if he'd have attended and carried out his responsibilities as a councillor and responsibilities to residents. It's a sheer disgrace and he should be ashamed of himself. Item number 22, joint report of the monitoring officer and the head of the leadership support and community A5. Councillor Heaney, you may remain seated. Thank you. Um, I move this report as appointment of the independent persons and independent remuneration panel. That's a difficult word. I can't say it. Pages 245 to 246. Thank you. Thank you. And your seconder? Councillor, oh, Councillor Miles. Thank you. Um, all those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Urgent, no, item number 23, urgent matters for debate. There are none. Item number 24, exclusion of press and public. Chairman, we've got an exempt minute from the previous meeting. I'm happy to move the rest of the agenda on block. I'll Thank you. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Item number 25, exempt. We've done that, sorry, my apologies. I'm running backwards. Um, a date of next scheduled meeting, uh, Tuesday the 22nd of January. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everybody happy Christmas, 7.30. And um, if you wish to come back to the parlour for refreshments, we'd be very glad to welcome you there. Thank you very much. Please be upstanding.